Hi, welcome back to the shop. I finally got the place cleaned up enough to think of producing a new video. So, well, here we are. Today, I'd like to touch on work holding devices for the lathe. And, well, we're going to be looking at three jaw chucks, four jaw chucks, centers, holding parts between centers, collets, mostly 5C collets, and we're going to be looking at compression holding of thin parts. Now, that is the work holding devices, but there's also a couple of work stabilizing devices that I would like to touch on. And, well, that will be follower rests and steady rests. So, let's get started. And we're going to start with what seems to be the go-to work holding device for the lathe and I'm talking of the self-centering three jaw chuck. Now I've kind of put a lot of emphasis on the self-centering bit just because well they are self-centering but they don't center very well. Now, why are they self-centering? Well because when we drive the jaws with the drive gear here all three jaws move simultaneously inwards or outwards. Now they can do that because they're in grooves open to the bottom and exposed to a spiral gear. Now the drive gear drives a crown gear that's on the back side of the spiral gear. And it's the spiral gear that moves the jaws forwards or backwards. Well, that's all nice and clean, but it isn't really. If we think about it, well, we have a spiral gear, a single start spiral gear driving three jaws. And those three jaws are supposed to meet at the center at the same time. And that means that the teeth on the back of those jaws the ones that mesh with the spiral gear well, cannot be positioned the same way for each of the three jaws. That's why each jaw is numbered 1, 2, and 3. And each groove in the three jaw chuck is also numbered 1, 2, and 3. And you can see where this is going. Jaw number 1 goes into groove number 1 and so on and so forth. Now, I'd love to say that that's the end of that, but it isn't. Because not only are the jaws numbered and the grooves numbered, or the slots, well, they have to engage with the spiral gear in the proper order. And that is, uh, jaw number one engages with the spiral gear first, then we turn the spiral gear with the drive gear to go and engage tooth number two, and then tooth number three. It has to engage in that order, or they'll never meet on center. Now, you may be sitting at home there wondering, when is he going to stop talking about three-jaw chucks? Well, it's not going to happen right now, because there's a few more things that need to be said. And the first is that, if I look here, each of my three jaws is numbered, one, two, three, yes, but they also have something like a serial number. In this case, 5,804. All three jaws have that same number. And that's important because I'd better find on the chuck body itself that same number. And then back here, right here, I have the number 5,804. So, that means that these jaws go with these chucks because not only is each jaw specific to its groove, but the three jaws are specific to this chuck. You can't interchange them to other chucks or they won't line up. So as this is set up here with these jaws, well, I could hold a ring by an internal diameter, a part of quite large diameter, up to about the diameter of the chuck with any one of these three contact points. Or I could hold on the outside diameter of a smaller part, no larger in this case than about two inches diameter, because I don't want the edges 
of these jaws to stick out from the chuck any more than they have to. Now, if I wanted to hold a bigger diameter, I'd have to reverse the jaws. The problem here is, on most three-jaw chucks, you can't do that. Well, on all of them, you can't do that because the drive teeth on the jaws have the same curvature as the spiral gear that drives them. And that means you can't turn them around. So that means that you would need two sets of jaws if you wanted to be able to reverse them. Some manufacturers get around that problem by producing the jaws in two parts. It's a little less rigid, but it does solve a lot of problems because the top of the jaw can be unscrewed and turned around and reset on its base. And since I never turned the base around, well, everything stays copacetic. Now, there's a lot of discussion about how concentric a three-jaw chucks are. And as a rule, they are quite concentric. But it's not just the chuck that's the problem here. It's what you're holding and how you're holding it. Now, if you're holding a part that is even slightly irregular in shape, a little oval, or has a high spot, or whatnot, well, obviously your three-jaw chuck, which has only three points of contact, will stabilize the part. But it won't hold it concentric to its axis, or the axis of the machine. So that's one problem. If your part isn't perfect, your chuck can be as perfect as you want, it's not going to help. The other thing is, oftentimes we're holding softer metals. And while sometimes the softer metals, the jaws will bite into them a little more on one surface than on the other, and that obviously will affect concentricity. How you hold the part can also be problematic. If you're holding the part just on the very tips of the jaws, well, you can cock your jaws, and obviously that's going to affect concentricity. So there's all these factors and many more, but there's one thing that remains true, and that is you can produce a part as concentric as physically possible on the lathe that you own, that is as accurate as the bearings on the spindle of the lathe, in one way using a three-jaw chuck, and that is producing a whole part without ever removing it from the chuck. If you can turn, surface, drill, uh, part off or whatnot, if you can produce the whole part, all of its diameters without removing it from the machine, it will be as concentric as the machine. Now that is something that we talk about in length in an incredibly boring and unpopular series of videos I produced a few years ago but a series that is very important, and that is planning a project, planning a parts sequence of operations. It's very crucial, and you can really get a lot out of a three-jaw chuck if you plan things out properly. And before we move on to the next subject, which is our four-jaw chucks, well, I'd like to mention, because I get a lot of comments on this, a lot. I get a regular to get comments on this, and I get a lot of comments in the videos, probably over a hundred a day, and that is great because it adds a lot of value to the videos. A lot of people come and add uh, information there that can really help out in the learning process. And well, also some people uh, comment to tell me how good I am, and well, I really like that. It flatters my ego. And as you can see, my head is getting bigger and bigger. It's swelling up. But regardless, the, the thing that comes back every now and then is that in my videos, I always only tighten my three jaws with one drive gear. And, well, a lot of people think you have to do several to get it tight. There's three jaws, so you need to tighten all three. Well, there's two reasons why I don't do it. The first is quite obvious. There's only one drive gear on my chuck here. See, only one. And there it is. And, well, the second reason is that this drive gear turns a crown gear that is part of a part that has this spiral gear on it that moves or drives the jaws. 
there's just one spiral gear and there's just one crown gear on that part and that means that when I turn this one or any of them if I had more than one drive gears well I'm turning the same spiral gear whether I have one three or six of these drive gears in there it will make no difference you only have to tighten one down so great stuff I tighten one down what are the other ones for well on this there aren't any but oftentimes on larger chucks there's even several of them it's mostly from what I can tell uh, it removes the obligation of having to turn the chuck a lot to get access especially on larger machines it can be quite a problem so you have more access if you have more drive gears so now let's move on and take a look at our next most popular tool for holding parts in a lathe our four jaw chuck the main difference between a three jaw chuck and a four jaw chuck is that the four jaw chuck has one more jaw see one two three and four now that sounds silly but it does have major implications because three is the stable number not in matrimony you want to stick to two but in positioning three is the stable number the tripod that's holding the camera well has three points of contact and that's at the very base of isostatic positioning now you may not know what isostatics are but I do have another incredibly boring video on that very important subject here's a link to that needless to say three points of contact is stable and I mentioned earlier in this video that when we were using the three jaws well it would conform to pretty well any round round dish surface the four jaw won't do that now it will for one main reason is that this four jaw as is the case with most four jaws has four independently moving jaws each jaw moves independently from the others since they have four independent jaws well four jaw chucks are a lot more difficult to use than three jaw chucks remember the three jaw chucks centered parts almost automatically well not really remember we also mentioned that any surface imperfection will throw the three jaw chuck out and there's really no adjustment on it because all three jaws move simultaneously well there is adjustments you can shim there's tricks you can do but it's not easy whereas the four jaw requires some work you have to adjust each jaw to get the contact and the position you want and that's the important thing to say the position that you want if you want it eccentric you can make it that way with the four jaw if you want it concentric well you can do that also you have to work at it though it requires practice but there are techniques and I do have a video about that so here's a link to a video showing three the centering of three different types of parts in four jaw chucks take a look at that it will help you out a lot with that so that means that the four jaw chuck is much more accurate than the three jaw chuck because we can adjust it ad nauseam that's latin i did do latin in high school that's latin for until you get sick and well you can get it as centered as you want so four jaw chucks good tools to have around you're going to want to start parts with your three jaw chuck and if you can't finish them without moving them well then you move on to your four jaw for the other diameters that need to be concentric to the first ones you produced in your three jaw another thing i think is important to mention the four jaw holds square or rectangular parts quite easily whereas the three jaw really can't do that so there are other benefits and since it has four jaws well it holds parts a little more stably in other words with more force not more stable but more force 
uh, so it's a nice tool to use when big cuts are going to be taken. Another thing that needs to be said is that since each jaw can be moved independently, we don't need a spiral gear like we had with the three jaw chucks. This one really only uses Acme threads to move the jaws forwards and backwards. And that means that they can be reversed at will. They work just as well one direction as the other. And since they're independent, well, we can use them mounted differently. We can mount one in one way and the other in the other. And that permits us to hold some pretty odd shaped parts. Now, there's an example of that in a little video I produced on uh, centering parts in four jaw chucks by projecting surfaces. And you can see in that video that I'm holding a very thin or relatively thin rectangular piece. So, four jaw chucks, important tools for working accurately on a lathe. Now, let's pass on to our next uh, work holding tool on the lathe, and that's collets. We're going to be looking at five C collets. Uh, very much used and very, very abused type of work holding device. Collets, more specifically C5 collets for the lathe. Why C5? Well, it is the most popular size and type of collet used in small home machine shops. But there are different sizes. You can get a C4 collet or a C6. It depends what you're looking for as far as dimensions go. The size of your machine, in other words. However, C5 collets are very accurate and they are very limited. What do I mean by that? Well, if we think of a three jaw chuck, it has adjustable jaws and we can even get reversed jaws that permit us to hold very small parts all the way up to quite large parts depending on the size of our chuck. If we think of a four jaw chuck, well it's the same thing. A lot of amplitude. When we think of holding parts between centers, well with the same centers we can hold a vast range of different diameters of parts. And if we think of compression holding parts, well we get into the same thing of having a lot of options as far as sizes go. We can hold very large parts, very small parts, depending on the fixtures that we create to compression hold parts. Collets are excellent fixing tools, but they are limited. If I have a 1 inch C5 collet, that means that it's a C5 collet that has a bore of 1 inch. Well, I can hold parts that measure anywhere from 998 thousandths of an inch all the way up to 1 inch 2 thousandths. That is only four thousandths of an inch in amplitude. Two under the base dimension and two over the base dimension. That's all I can hold. And on top of that, the parts that I hold in that collet have to be geometrically correct and have to have a good surface finish. I can't hold uh, oval parts or rough parts in a C5 or really any collet. So that means that they are quite limited. And that also means that if we're going to use them in a shop, well, we have to have a great selection of sizes. And that means many different sizes of collets. Here we have a spread of different collets. We have three C5 collets. And at the end here, we have a R8 collet, which works in a similar fashion. It's just that the R8 collets and their available in all kinds of sizes, as are the C5s, well they're mostly used to hold milling cutters in milling machines. If we look over at the other end here, we have our basic C5 collet with the one inch bore. Here we have a C5 collet in that the ge geometry of the body is a C5, but it has a machinable head on it here that can be machined to accept different parts. Here we have a C5 collet that was an abused collet, one that we were going to discard, that we modified at school with an electrical discharge machine to produce 
a cavity to hold specific parts and basically this C5 collet, well I would call it more a, a turning fixture now than a collet. And in back here, well we have Homer holding up what are two indexing blocks. We have a square and a hex indexing block and they're used to mount C5 collets into if you want to hold them in a milling machine. C5 collets can also be used in other accessories like this spin indexing head that has a bore that accepts C5 collets. When I used to teach professionally, I used to lecture around 15 hours a week and the length of a normal lecture would be about three hours. And that means that I had a lot of time and that my lectures were always geared around a three hour presentation. Now what I do here on the internet is a simplified version of what I used to do at school. And even at that I have a hard time gauging how much time it's going to take me to present a certain subject. So we're coming up to or have passed our 20 minute mark here. I'm not sure because I haven't done the editing of this video yet. I'm still recording it. And well, I realize that we have an awful lot of uh, things to cover yet. I mean, we've just touched on collets, but there's a lot more to be said. We still have turning between centers, compression uh, turning parts, and we have steady rests, we have follower rests to look at, and that's a lot of stuff. So that'll be part of the part two of this video. So until we meet again, have fun. I mean, that's what it's all about. It can only be fun if you're safe, because injuring yourself or someone else is never fun. And, well, as always, happy machining.